Surprises surely await newcomers flying into Luanda, the capital city of Angola. Dozens of tankers and freighters line the harbor, proof of the offshore oil and gas boom that is quickly transforming this resource-rich nation, devastated by a 27-year civil war, into potentially one of the wealthiest countries in Africa. Today, Luanda is bursting with over a million people, several times the population before 1975, when Angola was still a Portuguese colony. The brutal civil war finally ended in 2002, and today, once again, Angola is firmly at peace. Now, as petrodollars flow in, construction cranes multiply, along with the cost of living, as this country of 17 million people, twice the size of Texas, struggles to modernize its infrastructure. Ahead, we'll see some highlights from one of the biggest petrochemical projects in all of Africa, Angola LNG, just a short flight up the coast in Soyo. But for those who haven't landed in Luanda before, it's always a good idea to keep a few travel tips in mind to help ensure your safety and your comfort along the way. Before the plane even lands, use the restroom facilities one last time and dress cool for the tropics. You're just 12 degrees south of the equator. Make sure you have both your passport and yellow vaccination certificate at hand. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Try to tag along with someone who's been in Angola before. Bring a bottle of water. You may get thirsty standing in line. And be patient. It could take an hour or more to get through immigration. Bring a book or an MP3 player. If you're on an STV, a short-term visa, just hand over your passport at immigration, wait in the designated area, and it will be stamped and returned to you. Immigration is usually uneventful. Afterwards, collect your passport and look for the Angola LNG drivers in yellow security vests and identify yourself. They speak English, just do what they say. Make sure you pick up all your checked luggage from the carousel. Then follow your guide and wait for the plane to Soyo. Remember, take the plane to Soyo and do not take the plane to Malongo, or you'll regret it. Oh, and one final note, put the camera away once you get off the plane. Taking photos in airports is strictly a no-no. After about a 50-minute flight up the coast, you'll arrive in Soyo, capital of Zaire province. You may notice that the airport itself is somewhat basic, but runway resurfacing, perimeter security, and improvements to the terminal building are on the way. A driver from Angola LNG will meet you. Have your passport ready to hand over. He'll return it later in the day. For first-time visitors, the ride through the town of Soyo can be an eye-opener to the harsh realities of life in this West African country. The Angola LNG project includes an ambitious scope for off-site and infrastructure improvements to the roads in this rapidly growing town. Located close to the mouth of the Congo River, Soyo was the site of major fighting in 1994. After a bumpy 20-minute bus ride, you'll arrive at Kwanda Base, the site of the Angola LNG project, hopefully just in time for lunch. While the airport runway is being resurfaced, handover time is extremely short, just enough for quick hellos and goodbyes. In order to smooth transitions, contact your back-to-back -back before arriving at site. Are you leaving for the one? Leaving for one. So all but me. <laughs> yeah. So you're part of the Left Behind series yeah. here. Unfortunately. So Steve, any uh, tips that you've got for uh, new rotators coming in for the first time? Be patient and be flexible. That's about the best advice I can give. This is the rec center where most LNG staff take lunch at 11.30 every day. The menu here is varied and hearty. It includes plenty of fresh salad, soup, and desserts. Don't worry, bottled water is plentiful throughout the site, and serious stomach upsets are rare for those working here. The man who does much of the landscaping, gardening, and is in charge of meal logistics is camp boss Antonio Vidinha. So the people can have their meals in four different places. 
they can have it in um, here in rec room at lunchtime <clears throat> they can have in the um, cold room uh, also in the um, in the mess hall and uh, another place is the hotel quando which is has to be paid in, in cash the good news is the Quanda base does boast a luxury hotel and a few rooms are even reserved for LNG personnel. You could choose to dine here, but the bad news is that chances are on this assignment you won't be spending too much time at the hotel or in the pool. But feel free to have an after hours game of tennis at the three lighted courts across the street. Depending on your assignment, you may spend much of your off hours in one of these studios. Each building contains four studio apartments, each equipped with satellite TV, a refrigerator, and private bath. Eight more studios are being built to house another 32 LNG staff, but they're not yet completed, and until then, available housing is very tight. Carlos Alipaz has a tough job juggling room assignments. Well, I just try to accommodate as best as I can. That's all I do. Yeah. I just try to make people happy. <laughs> a few staff are assigned to the Volker Camp housing run by Quanda Base. In the months to come, many more, up to 100 people, could be assigned to lodging on the construction site itself currently being built. Possible advantages to living on the Bechtel site could include being close to work, close to the cafeteria, and close to the extensive recreation facilities now under construction. For those living in the studios on Quanda Base, the best choice for breakfast and dinner is the cafeteria, which serves 2,500 people a day. Lines move quickly, and the food is healthy with imported produce and meats. High-calorie desserts and cheeses are always available, but you can't take food out of the cafeteria. If you crave something particular, you can order it weekly from the Express Store, stocked with food and necessities from around the world. Everything may not always be available, but this is as close as you'll get to a Walmart. Prices are reasonable, and payment is in dollars, preferably crisp new bills, so bring some with you. If you'll be working in an office, chances are it will be here, inside the Angola LNG gate. Over 100 people are already in rotation on site. First of all, I'd like to welcome everybody. My name is Kevin Kasner, the site manager for Angola LNG. Uh, the project is on a very fast uh, ramp up right now. Things are beginning to happen very quickly here in soil as the project begins to take shape. Uh, part of that uh, taking shape is making sure that we have the right resources on the ground here. Our key role or objective here in soil is to uh, build the, L the Angola LNG project safely, on time, on schedule, and to the expectations that the shareholders expect. And key in all of this, though, is that we have the right resources here from the project management team and able to do our job. Quanda Base was almost completely destroyed in the war and was largely rebuilt after 1994. As the LNG staff on site grows, work takes place in air-conditioned offices and trailers, connected by telephone and computer with each other, and to Houston, Luanda, and around the world. People from all over the globe are here, helping supervise construction of the giant LNG plant just a half mile away. Some handle logistics and contracts. Others work to keep documents under control and information technology up to date. Engineers and inspectors visit the site many times a day, managing the mountain of daily details a multi-billion dollar international construction project requires. Despite the schedule pressure, the working environment is usually informal and relaxed. Here, patience is a richly rewarded virtue. Make no mistake, this is a work site and everyone is serious about safety. The ESE safety program is based on a simple idea. Every person goes home safe every day and it starts on day one. What we do have is a, a one hour briefing which will make every, everybody that gets on the job site ha have the awareness for the first day uh, and then they're assigned their escort uh, they'll be with for the first day and then we get them into the longer version of orientation. And the reason we do that obviously is we want to make sure that everybody's safety is the utmost uh, priority. It's number one uh, when they 
arrive here on the site while they take their time and do their work activity, whether that be in the office or out on a construction site. If a health emergency does arise, a medical advisor is on staff to handle minor problems. If it's more serious, then we can make a decision that you probably have to go and see the doctor. We do have an arrangement with a Quanda clinic where there's expat doctors in full laboratory and radiology facilities. And uh, in the unlikely and unfortunate event that you have a more serious injury or illness, then uh, we can take you to the clinic and you'd be held there pending Medivac. Our Medivac destination of choice would be Johannesburg because they have first world medical facilities there. This is Africa after all, and you do want to be careful. Not that you're likely to meet up with one of these shy water monitors caught in town and ready to be measured and returned by Angola LNG wildlife advisors to a natural habitat, far from human beings. What do you do to protect the people from the wildlife and the wildlife from the people? Well, you know, we conduct the regular um, wildlife awareness for all the various contractors and employees on the site. Firstly, to educate them on what species are venomous and what to do if they do come across any venomous snakes. And, you know, the gist of it is basically to leave the animals alone, contact us as soon as possible, and then we go out and remove them and assess the situation or whatever the case may be and take it from there. So unlike snakes, these guys can hear airborne sounds. Snakes don't have any external ear opening, so they're deaf to airborne sounds, whereas these guys do. You can see that's obviously the ear there, and then there's the nostril over there. The construction site is where the real heavy lifting occurs. It's run by Bechtel, the prime contractor with experience building similar LNG plants in remote corners of the globe. Bechtel's subcontractors are driving thousands of pilings for two giant reinforced LNG tanks and using a deep soil mixing method to stabilize the terrain for the facility foundation. Work in 2009 includes completing camp construction. By year's end, some 6,000 workers from around the world will live in a self-contained construction camp on reclaimed land on the shore of the Congo River in what once was a mangrove swamp. A major new scope of the project begins in 2009 with the Pipeline Group. A consortium of European contractors will lay thick-walled pipelines connecting offshore gas supplies with the processing plant. Three 10-kilometer lines will be laid from the shore across swampy terrain. A camp for the 200-person onshore pipeline crew will be built on higher ground after any unexploded ordnance and mines have been cleared. However, all areas within Quanda Base itself have already been demined, and the camp area is safe. While the permanent pipeline camp is being built, some Angola LNG personnel may be temporarily housed at the nearby Kenwicka Resort, about a half hour away from the base. Rutted roads, which often wash out in the rainy season, must also be resurfaced to allow for transport of material and personnel. Back on Quanda Base, transportation is much easier. No rush hour traffic and no long commutes, thanks to the white buses driven by trained personnel. They pick you up early in the morning to go to work, drive you to lunch at midday, and then return you safely to your lodging at six after work. Since Quanda Base is a closed camp, you won't be venturing into Soyo in the evening. And while working on site is definitely not a holiday camp with a menu of planned leisure activities, there are things to do after work for those who feel so inclined. When the new studios are finally ready, a state-of-the-art gym will take the place of the present rec center. Until then, there's always pick-up basketball games, squash courts, soccer, and of course, walking or running around the base in the evening. At least once a week, the HSE department fires up the grill for an informal meal for rotators who miss the homestyle backyard barbecue and beer. Oh, what you cooking? I'm cooking hamburgers, cheeseburgers, and ballpark franks on the grill. And I think inside we have some french fries being cooked. Afterwards, they say it's not exactly high stakes. And anybody can play. All you have to do is ante up. Yeah. 
Just don't try to bluff too hard if you don't know what you're doing. Competition is just as fierce as you'd expect to find in a testosterone-driven construction camp in tropical Africa. But surprisingly, perhaps, the friendly spirit of working together in a closely knit environment puts a high value on righteous behavior. Who knows, maybe you'll hit the jackpot now that you've got Soyo in sight. Meanwhile, here are a few tips from some of the people who are here already, getting the job done. Oh, number one tip is when, when they are coming on the site, before they travel, they need to make sure that they bring some snack of food and uh, the bottle of water. Tell them to remember that the voltage is mixed here, so don't bring a hair dryer that's 110 volts and expect to be able to plug it into every plug here because some of the plugs are 220 volts, some of them are 110. If you could just kind of hook up with someone, that would really make life much easier. And I think it's probably not hard to do because probably almost every flight coming into, um, into Angola, uh, there's probably going to be some Angola LNG employees on there. That would be my best suggestion. A good idea would be to make a copy of your passport and your visa and to keep that uh, with you um, at all times and uh, if at all possible to get a second passport you may be stuck in a situation waiting for a, a visa to come through and then you have an emergency and you might need to leave so having a second passport can only be in your benefit. Uh, my suggestion would be to bring uh, videos and books if that's what you like to do, any form of entertainment after work puzzles, whatever. Falciparum malaria is the worst type. It's endemic in this area and everywhere in Angola. So any expat who comes with no immunity should come prepared to take malaria prophylaxis for the duration of their stay. The one tip that I'd recommend, and it's probably very obvious, would be to bring plenty of sunscreen because, as you can see, <laughs> I've got burnt um, and it can get quite hot and humid. So sunscreen would be number one on my list. Oatmeal, because I'm an oatmeal uh, fanatic. I usually eat it in the morning so I can be uh, energetic. Especially from the US because of the time difference, I would say uh, some sleeping pills for the first couple of days would be good. So you can recuperate from the uh, exhausting flight of 15 hours. You might want to bring a jump rope or a course mobility ball. Obviously, deflate it before you bring it. Uh, some dumbbells, if you got any workout videos or something. Well, I would bring breakfast foods um, and bring some fruit because the breakfast food is pretty fatty. If you bring some granolas or um, bring some dried fruit, I think that would be good. It's a remote location, but it's pretty fun. We got a lot of good people working here and. Uh, uh, but when you do come, we expect hard work out of everybody and we'll get this plan built.